Okay, everyone, it's time for a new chapter. Chapter 4, we're going to be talking about financial education. So, all sorts of stuff about money and banks and loans and leases and mortgages, all sorts of stuff. So, another chapter, which I'm not, you know, totally my expertise, uh, probably a little more comfortable than the last chapter with all the perspective drawings and stuff, but I don't purport to be a, a finance whiz. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting stuff, and I'm happy to brush up on this um, and teach us all a few things, including myself. So we're going to start with financial institutions. What are we talking about with financial institutions? It's a company that's engaged in the business of financial and monetary transactions. So that could include deposits. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of these words over the next few days, so I won't define them too specifically here. You probably know a lot of them anyway. Deposits, putting money into the institution. Loans, getting money from the institution to help you buy things, right? Then you have to pay it back later. Investments, putting money in the bank and then hoping to make more money or into the institution. The bank's just one example of a financial institution. Currency exchange, right? You got your Canadian cash and you're going to Mexico, so you want to go and change it into uh, Mexican currency. So financial institution can do those sorts of things. And there's lots of other things they can do as well. So I thought maybe the first thing you should do is we've got two words sitting here that I was kind of a little bit unsure of. The difference between finance and money. So basically money is part of finance. So money is like the dollars and cents in your pocket, right? You've got that $10 in your pocket, that's money. We all know that. Finance includes money, but it's also things like loans and checks and credits, all the stuff you can do with uh, money, um, right? You can lend it out, you can borrow it, you can write checks, all that stuff includes finance. And that's what this chapter is all about, is finance. So we're going to look at a whole bunch of different financial institutions. I think I've got eight or nine of them. The first one, by far the most common one. Many people probably go through their whole life and only use this one. It's the banks, full service banks. And the reason they're called full service banks is just that. They provide pretty well every service you can think of. So these other institutions, these other financial institutions, I'm going to mention some uh, functions that they have, but the banks probably do every single one of these uh, those functions as well. So it's kind of like your one-stop shop, but there are some advantages go going to other places besides banks sometimes. So first of all, I'll start off by telling you the big five Canadian banks. Pause the video, see if you can name them all. You know a few, right? Royal Bank, TD, CIBC, Bank of Montreal. What's the last one? Scotiabank, I think. TD, Royal Bank, that's it. Okay, there you go. Those are the big five banks in Canada. And they have a global presence, right? You go to different countries, you'll find these banks there as well. Um, so they're licensed by the government. You and I can't just go and start a bank tomorrow. Be nice, but we can't do that. Uh, you got to get a special licensing by the government. And the way they do, they, the reason they do this is to ensure market transparency. You know what that means? Market transparency. That means everything's out in the open. There's nothing secretive going on. It's not like. Um, you might have heard of offshore banks. This is where, you know, in the movies, the criminals, the drug dealers is where they go and uh, put all their money and everything. And that's because there's not so much transparency at banks like that. Uh, and so they can get around, away with doing some things that are bordering on the illegal or maybe completely illegal. But for a bank in Canada, it's got to be licensed and it's got to be very clear what's happening. They've got to account for all the money coming in, all the money going out. Um, there should be nothing, no surprises when you put your money in the bank. You shouldn't be surprised a few months or years later by what's going on at that bank. Okay, they provide many services. So this is just some of them. They provide checking and savings accounts. We'll definitely be talking about those next day, the, day, uh, the difference between checkings and savings accounts. Uh, ATM services, right? That's the automatic banking, online banking, right? This is how most people do their banking now probably, at least people your age and probably my age or younger do a lot of online banking. We don't actually walk into the bank very much anymore. Uh, currency exchange, already talked about that. Bill payments, if I have to pay my MasterCard bill, I don't really deal with MasterCard much at all, I deal with the bank. Safety deposit box, uh, if you have you know, some family heirlooms, uh, jewels, 
and again, the movies, where do the gangsters take their cash and their weapons and stuff? They take them into the safety deposit box. I'm not saying that's why they're there, the safety deposit box. I'm just giving you an example of where you might have seen them before. But this is a place where you can put things and, and leave it there secure in the bank. Uh, it's kind of like a safe in your house, except it's in the bank, even more secure. Uh, investments, again, we'll be talking about these things, RRSPs, GICs, term deposits, we'll define and talk about all those things uh, later on in this chapter. And loans, right? You take money from the bank and you agree to pay it back later with some interest. Mortgages, which is just a loan where you buy a house. And lines of credit, where you get a usually big chunk of cash and uh, you agree to pay it back. You'll notice there's no actual numbers we're doing today. This is just a lot of me talking. So I'm sorry if this isn't the most interesting video, but hey, at least there's no calculations for you to do. I know some of you don't like that. All right, number two, credit union. Very similar to a bank. Uh, a credit union is owned by its members. So the people who have accounts at that those uh, establishments are the, the also the members, and they have a say in the financial policies. So if you don't want to speak up, you don't have to, but you do have the opportunity to uh, speak up and say, you know, I don't think our credit union should be investing in these sorts of stocks because they're not uh, environmentally sound, for example. And uh, also, they're not for profit, but if there is a profit then it's shared between the members. So this is not the case with banks, right? Banks are trying to make as much money as possible for themselves. But with credit unions, it's not the goal. The goal is to cover all the costs and everything. But if there is any money left over, that money is shared between the members. And remember, the members include all the account holders. Uh, they're similar to banks in function and services offered. So I think pretty well all these things I've listed here for services of banks, I think you could probably put those down for credit unions as well. The biggest difference is the fact it's owned by its members. And they're usually concentrated around regions of Canada, right? Like Van City, that's Vancouver City, right? That's a credit union in the Vancouver area. You're not going to find that in uh, the middle of Nova Scotia. Coast Capital is another West Coast one. Sunshine Coast Credit Union, well, guess where that is? Right? If I drive down the highway near where I live on the Sunshine Coast, I see Sunshine Coast Credit Union. You probably don't see that in the west end of Vancouver. Okay, online banks becoming very popular. Good option. Uh, these operate without branches. Like they don't have the um, actual building to walk into. Therefore, they can operate cheaper. They're strictly done online. So they can offer lower account fees. They're not paying for buildings and rent and all that kind of stuff. No cleaning, nothing like that. No heat. So they can offer lower account fees, lower borrowing costs, and they often give higher interest on deposits. So uh, there's, these are owned, all of them are owned or affiliated with larger financial institutions. For example, Tangerine, which is very uh, popular. It's um, a place where many, many people are investing money in Canada, and it's actually got great ratings. Uh, in, in Canada. It's owned by Scotiabank. It's entirely online. You're not going to find, although I think there used to be one downtown Vancouver, but you're not going to find many or any uh, places where you could walk into the building and do your banking at Tangerine. But if you're willing to do your banking online, Tangerine's a great op option. Another one here owned by CIBC is Simply Financial. Um, don't like the way they spell that, by the way. All right, so those are online banks. Again, pretty similar to uh, the full-service banks uh, in what they can offer, but uh, you're not being able to walk into the bank. You're doing it all online. Okay, now some things that maybe are less commonly known, but also are referred to as financial institutions, so we should include them. Uh, insurance companies. Well, they provide us with insurance, don't they? They protect individuals and businesses against financial loss due to death, so like life insurance. Disability, disability insurance, critical illness insurance, accidents, well, there's your motor, motor vehicle insurance, property damage, house insurance, and other misfortunes. So, right, we know how insurance works. I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but uh, you pay up front some money for insurance. Hopefully nothing bad happens to you, in which case the insurance company keeps your money. But if something does bad, ha bad happen to you, then the uh, insurance company pays out to you. Uh, examples of those, ICBC, probably heard of that, especially if you uh, are going to pur uh, purchase a car anytime soon. Uh, it's the insurance company of British Columbia. That's how we insure our cars in BC, at least partially, if not entirely. Desjardins Insurance, Allstate, 
the cooperators. These are all uh, examples of insurance companies. Okay, a loan company. Well, again, not too surprising what they do. They provide loans. Uh, loans and mortgages. Remember, mortgage is a loan for a house. Um, they may offer better interest rates than banks or credit unions. So that would be a good thing. If you could get a lower interest rate, you're going to end up paying a little more, a little less, sorry, and that's a good thing. Um, and examples are Fairstone, Cashco. I don't know these for, uh, by the way, I'm not um, too familiar with those. And Cash Money. Now, I do know Cash Money. This is an example of a payday loan company. We'll definitely be talking about this later on. Be very careful about the payday loan companies. Uh, they don't have a great track record. Okay, investment companies. Again, all these names really kind of are self-explanatory. Investment companies helps you invest your money. So they provide financial planning services. Here's where you'd go if you had some money to, to play with, so to speak, and you'd go to investment company and say, hey, I'm looking at uh, um, investing my money wisely so that uh, when I retire, I have enough money to do all the things I wanna do. Um, and as well, I wanna do great things now so how can I do that? How can I do the things I want to do now, but also save for the future? That's called financial planning, and an investment company would help you with that. They provide wealth management, it's called. They help you choose investments, help with your tax planning, right? Maybe able to work out with you the best way to uh, claim your taxes, to maximize your deductions, and pay as little tax as possible, legally, of course. Your estate, your estate are the assets owned upon dying. So I know it's not a cheery thing to think about, but you do have to think, think about your estate planning. So when you die, you want to make sure that your kids or your family aren't left with a whole bunch of debt. You want to make sure that uh, you leave uh, things in order, and that's considered estate planning. An investment company could help you with that. Examples of those, Edward Jones, Manulife, Asante, these are big companies in Canada. All the companies I've put in for all these financial institutions, these are all Canadian companies or at least they, they operate in Canada if they're not actually Canadian owned. Okay, a trust company. This one's not so obvious. A trust company manages and invests assets for an individual company, estate, or trust. So an estate, again, is kind of something that's set up uh, for when you die. So, you know, let's say I had all this money and I set up an estate, and then when I pass away, my, my assets still remain in my estate and uh, you know a trust company could help with that. As for a trust, okay, this requires a little bit of explanation here. A trust company can act as a trustee and what that is is someone or a company that uh, manages assets for another person. So they are given the, uh, the power to look after someone's assets and then eventually those assets are paid out to a third party a beneficiary. So for example, let's say um, when Simone, my youngest daughter, uh, we started paying uh, for RESP, which is her education saving plan. I imagine many of you have one that your parents put in place for you. So the idea is that we could use a trust company and say, okay, we're going to give you the power to manage our money, or at least some of it, in order to accumulate some uh, money for Simone, so when she gets to university age, she has money. So the trustee is the trust company, and Simone would be the beneficiary. When she gets to a certain age, uh, I guess when she starts university, the trust company who would manage the money would then pay out some of that money um, so that Simone has money to go to university. So the way that works is the trust company is going to take a percentage of the money that uh, is given to Simone, or they might just take a certain amount year to year as, uh, as we go along. Um, example of that, Royal Trust, Canada Trust, National Trust, these are all trust companies. Brokerage firms. A brokerage firm assists individuals and institutions in buying and selling securities. Securities are like stocks and bonds and mutual funds. Again, we'll talk about this, but you know, you've seen this in the movie, the stock exchange, selling your stocks, buying them low, selling them high. A stock broker would work for a brokerage firm and uh, they take a percentage again of the money earned by anyone playing the stock market. So Quest Trade apparently is the number one in Canada, number one rated. Again, I don't, I'm not familiar with these. Wealth Simple I have heard of and Q Trade is another one I found.
And finally, mortgage company. I think this one's obvious. They could provide us with mortgages. Now, most people go to a bank probably for a mortgage or a loan company, but you can also use a mortgage company. Often people will use a mortgage company if the bank won't give them a, mor a mortgage. They might go to the bank. Bank looks at all your income, your debts, and they might say, you know what, you're too much of a risk. We're not going to provide you with a mortgage. So this is another option for people, which is nice. The unfortunate thing is it's often at a higher interest rate. And uh, you have to be careful because if you uh, fail to pay off these mortgage companies, some of them can be pretty ruthless. Uh, examples, Home Trust and Meridian are a couple names I've found for Canada. All right, so that is an introduction to some of the main financial institutions. There might be a few other institutions that fit the bill, but these are the nine main ones that uh, I found from my little bit of research. So I hope that makes sense, and next day we'll focus in, I would imagine, uh, on these first three. The full service banks, the credit unions, and the online banks, they all kind of provide the same thing, and we'll be looking at those three. Okay, we'll talk to you then. Bye.